I'm Mark Callian, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. I'm willing to bet with 99% certainty that fish, not corals, got you interested in the saltwater tank hobby. When you first started looking at saltwater tanks, the conversation went like this. Wow, look at all those pretty saltwater fish. And then someone said, what about all the corals? And you looked and you went, hmm, they just sit there. They don't even move. Maybe later. And then sometime not too later on, you decided, hey, I'll give this coral thing a try. Why not? And if you're making the transition from fish into coral, the question naturally becomes, what corals do I buy as a beginner? And how do I take care of these corals? And how do I know if they're doing well? More importantly, how do I know if they're not doing well? And if they're not doing well, what do I do about it? Well, to help me answer all those questions, I dropped in on Worldwide Corals to have them lend me a hand. All right, so Mark, we got five great beginner corals here. Um, this is what we're starting for our beginner coral pack. Okay. Um, I'll take you a quick rundown of the five that we have. Um, to start it off, we have a pink polyp Montipora cap. Um, we have a cat eye zoanthid, a GSP or green star polyp. We have a neon green trumpet coral and a war coral to finish. We've got a mix here of SPS, LPS, and softies. Explain what those are for the people who don't know. SPS stands for small polyp sony coral. Um, that's breaking down the actual structure of the coral. How small is small? Really small. Try one tenth of an inch or five millimeters small. LPS, similar, large polyp stony coral. Large as in large polyp stony coral has more of a range. Some large polyp sizes are small as in three quarters of an inch and others can be inches across like the open brain coral or this meat coral. And soft coral is um, classified almost in an invertebrate category, depending on which types, or the coral itself is a soft skeletal structure. Okay, so it's not laying down in calcium or stony, bony looking structure. Correct. Soft corals are easily identified because they move in the flow of your tank, like these guys. Walk me through each of these, because these are some great corals that have a lot of forgiveness. You hit the nail on the head with forgiveness. Um, they're definitely all forgiving corals, and they're great to start with. Um, starting first with a pink polyp Montipora cap. Um, it's a great coral that you can place pretty much medium to high in the aquarium, um, but it's very forgiving. It's going to hold its color. It's going to be very rewarding coral for customers. Moving next into the uh, cat eye zoanthids. Um, that's a coral you can place pretty much anywhere in the aquarium with a good amount of flow, and it's going to do well. And it's going to look rewarding because you're going to see those heads multiply pretty quickly. Moving next into the GSP or green star polyp. That's something that's good for people's ego because it does grow really well. Whoa, 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 whoa. If you follow me long enough, you know I'm not a GSP fan. So why am I showing you this coral? Here's why. Green star polyp can be managed. And you do that by keeping it on isolation. Why would you do that? Here's why. Green star polyp is likely gonna grow very quickly in your aquarium. It's gonna overgrow the rocks and can sting other corals. And by the way, once it grows on the rock, you're never gonna get it off. So you want to create green star polyp island. Here's how you do it. First, grab yourself a piece of live rock like this one here, put it out in the middle of the sand bed where it's not touching any other corals or any other rocks. Put your green star polyp frag right in the middle of it, glue it down with some super glue, and then leave it be. It's going to overgrow this rock, create that green star polyp island, that's wavy green coral that's going to be very pleasing to the eye, but it's not going to touch anything else. It's not going to take off across the sand bed and cause problems with other corals. So, not a huge GSP fan, but they're great for beginners, especially if you keep them safe, and you do that by putting them on isolation. Moving next into the neon trumpet coral, that's a great start into the LPS world, okay. um, just because it's something that you can place in a lower lit area of the aquarium, or even mid-level in the aquarium, that's gonna do well for you, and it's gonna give a bright splash of color for you. Yeah, once those things multiply out, you can have a big ball of those things, exactly. and they just glow under exactly. activity planes. Mm -hmm. And it, it becomes a very rewarding coral. Yeah. And last, we have the war coral, which is just a very nice staple red coral. Yeah. Um, that's just an easy growing coral that, same thing, is very rewarding and very forgiving. If for any reason it does start to recede or lose some color, it comes back fairly quickly. So it's a great for a beginner. So what kind of lights will these corals grow under? For the most part, any of these are going to grow under pretty generic lighting. Uh, you might not get the colors you're hoping for. You really should have good lights running on the system, like Radeons um, or even a nice T5 set. 
So if you had some old power compacts floating around, they'd probably get the job done. They'd probably get it done. Yeah, I recommend you hard. get rid of those pretty quickly, but <laughs> they're going to get you out the gate. Exactly. It'll at least get you started and it'll get your foot in the door. These plugs, should we cut them off the plugs? Um, we don't recommend you removing them from the plugs, especially if they're encrusted, because that could damage the coral, especially if it is a beginner and you're not really sure what to do. You don't want to damage the coral because that's not a good start. One thing about beginners is there's, there's a learning curve to corals when you make the transition from fish to corals. Mm -hmm. What do we need to know about these guys in terms of signs of when they're not doing well? They all have different signs um, in terms of how they would or would not be doing well based on just the individual species. But um, with the SPS or even the LPS, if they start to show any kind of white tissue recession, if they got any kind of polyp recession in it, or if they look for any reason, like there's any tissue damage, they might not be doing well. Same thing with the color, if the color is going away in them. Um, when you talk about the zoanthids or the GSP, if they're just completely tucked up and closed, it's probably a sign something's wrong, whether it's water parameters or placement or even lighting in the aquarium. Um, same thing as far as with the zoanthids, if they look like they're starting to mucus or even melt away, that's probably a sign that something's not right or if they get kind of a brown slime on them, the fuzz. Correct, yeah, that's not a good thing either. Okay, if that happens to any of these, what do you recommend people do first? Um, first thing is one, definitely check your water parameters, make sure everything's good there. Um, second, I would consult with either your local fish store or even us um, about what you should do as far as removing that to a different placement or trying to get that to where it's gonna need to be to be successful and grow. Dylan, what I really like about this beginner pack is we've got a good variety of SPS, LPS, softies, colors. They're great. Um, they're gateway corals, as some people would call them. Um, but like you said, they are very forgiving. You get a good splash of color. And you're hitting all bases to really find out what you are successful with right out of the gate and to help build that confidence to try to get more corals in. Right, man. Looks good. Keep, uh, keep growing these. Keep fragging them. <laughs> you know, I'm a fan of aquaculture. Yes, sir. Keep up the good work. No problem. Thanks, man. Thank you.